Hello everyone, we are Swag Vintage AZ. Huge thanks to all of you for watching our videos and subscribing. If you haven't yet, please do so. And we're trying to get to 2K followers on both YouTube and Instagram. So please follow us, we would love to have you. We also post our online listings on Etsy, but most of our items lately end up at the Brass Armadillo in Phoenix, Arizona at I-17 and Cactus. We are booth P2 in the parlor, which is kind of a side gallery from the main mall. So come and check us out if you are in town. Okay, this day we started in my favorite section, but it's also the most painful section for me, the lamps. As you know, I love them. And this Goodwill is actually the same Goodwill where I scored 10 lamps in one go. That is a video from a few months ago. Today, however, was not a 10 lamp day, which is good because I don't really have the real estate in my home or at our booth for it. But I saw this little guy over in the vacuum cleaners. And of course, anything brass, I will take a look at. But I just loved this unique, adjustable, fully brass shade. So I found out these are called Orient Express or train lamps. And the pricing is all over the place on these. And I played around with this, you know, you go ahead and unscrew it to adjust it and then tighten that screw. Really cool piece. I tested it. It works. It is heading to the booth this week. And the price tag on it here at this Goodwill was $12.50, which is a little steep. But I think I can get like $25, maybe even $30 for that lamp. So I went ahead and picked that up. Checking out the shades because my booth partner and I are going to, oh, and I loved this glass cover, but uh, my booth partner and I are going to install kind of like a lamp wall uh, with some shelving. And I don't know if, if you are following me on Instagram, you saw a video of his amazing collection. So I'm going to be looking for shades to put the finishing touch on a lot of the lamps that I already have. Of course, I'm taking a look in the floor lamps. I'm actually looking for, well, always for resale, but also for myself. Um, there's a, I'm so excited there's a room in our house that doesn't have good lighting, so I get to add more lamps to my own home. Okay, looking into furniture. Not much to see here. Looks like um, possibly a local school got rid of some old chairs and desks. Then we look over here. I loved the look of these kind of traditional leather seated leather backed dining chairs they could be you know uh, library chairs as well some stools some other those are kind of nice contemporary uh, chairs with clean lines and then some little kid plastic chairs nothing to write home about or to bring home or to the booth this caught my eye with this rounded table that has like a burl wood. Pretty, but pretty damaged also. So we left that one behind and it's quite a large size. So that would have to be something pretty spectacular for me to bring home at that size. Uh, funky little magazine rack, very 70s, 80s. And then moving into just some shelves. I took a peek at this one because these pieces, even though this one's super damaged, and if I could focus, and $14, not worth it in my opinion, but that style is coming back big time. Um, a lot of the videos that I've been watching for 2024 trends are that postmodern look. So here I am looking in the purses and I spot this potentially vintage bag. A Little bit of condition issues on this one, so it will, most likely go to the booth. I'm opening it up. Definitely an older tag. And it was a little musty, so I gave it a good cleaning. And at $4.50, I think I put a price tag of maybe $12 to $15 on that one. And that's going to the booth. I think in spite of its condition issues, it's got a really great look to it for someone who might be heading to a wedding. The Lucite handle caught my eye on this one. And as I'm opening it, I'm doing some horrible camera work. Sorry about that. But this is a more contemporary <laughs> handbag. So we decided to put that one back. And there should be one more. I see it right there, this patent leather piece 
with a gold finish. I loved the clasp on it. It was this hinged clasp and then this sort of accordion opening with a chain handle. I thought it had really great potential. And as I'm struggling to do this smoothly and my camera work is a little wonky, apologies. When I'm looking in, this thing was 99 cents. So initially I was agonizing about it because I'm like, well, it's small, it's patent leather, blah, blah, blah. But for 99 cents, definitely worth snagging. And into the electronics, some interesting things. Now this $24 mixer, I don't think I could get much more for it in the booth. This one, $20, same issue there, and it didn't have its bowls, so I decided to pass on those. I'm starting to get in the habit of checking more of the aisles, sports equipment, electronics, just to really give a thorough look at all of the thrifting that I'm doing. That was a nice bowl, I thought, with the mixed metal. And then here I found a candle snuffer. However, it was really lightweight and very delicate, so I decided to pass on it. But then I found this one that matched a couple of angels, angel candle holders that I sold near the holidays, and I'm still in touch with that buyer, so I went ahead and offered that little snuffer to go, because it's like a perfect match, and they said yes, so we will reunite this little guy with the angels. Tough to keep it in the cart without it falling through the wire there. Uh, these caught my eye, a nice green glass bowl. I need to pack my purse with a purple flashlight so I can see if things glow. I had one for a while, but it ran out of batteries, so something to put on my to-do list. And here I am just looking at the cut glass pieces. I'm always a sucker for beautiful clear glass. It never, well, it's a slow sale. I'll stay optimistic, but I decided to pass on all of those pieces. Here's a quail with the broken top knot, which is very common in that ironwood style. And that was an intriguing little wood canister, but I left it behind. And this basket caught my eye. It had a beautiful tight weave on it, and especially with the diamonds on the sides. However, I did notice a little bit of damage on the inside. It wasn't in the best condition, so I went ahead and left it. And also, I don't know if baskets really sell. I haven't even tried. So I may pick one up that's in perfect condition and put it in the booth and see if I can get anything for it in the future. This weave caught my eye, a lid to a missing bottom, which I did not find as I was thrifting, but that's a very distinct Southwestern weave. Wood bowl, got to pick it up, nice and rustic. But for $3.49, I just didn't think I could charge more than 5 or $6 for it. And some wonderful monkey pod wood, very cute shapes. However, I think I need to pump the brakes on monkey pod wood because I typically pick them up and it's been a slower sale for me in the booth. All right, so I think this might be the find of the day, you guys. Look at these gorgeous mid-century modern cats. Now they their pose is very much in that classic carved wood mid-century modern cat that is really popular but these they are carved wood it looks like gold leaf and then hand painted details and i'm going to pop in some photos here so you can see what they look like all dressed up so i went ahead and staged these i had every intention of selling them and then i ended up taking like 25 pictures which is always kind of a bad sign for me where I'm like, oh, I don't think I'm going to be making any money off of these because I'm keeping them. They are so great. Look at their, their little collars with the bells. Their toes are cute. They have these really great ponytail things on the other side. I just love the craftsmanship. There's a little bit of wear and tear, but it's not a big deal at all. It adds to their character. They are wonderful. So they live on my mantle right now. That horse is for sale if you're interested, but these two kitties are gonna stay with me for now on my mantle with all of my other thrifted things that I just can't sell. Here, I found a really great rustic, very earthy. I mean, like talk about like polar opposite of those cats that are so gold and sparkly. This one looked like some ancient vessel. I don't think it is. However, it 
really, I found it really attractive. I think it could add some really nice texture and just a more natural vibe to someone's shelfscape or mantle or kitchen. So that is listed in my Etsy shop right now. So if you like it, go check it out. Here I am in the candles and I found this hobnail piece and it was $17.50. So they clearly knew what they had there. I don't think I could get that much for it at the booth, maybe not even online. So we're gonna leave that one behind. And into candles, nothing really jumping out at me. Shelves are nice and full today. And then in the vases I found, you know, I just can't give up studio pottery. In the last visit, I had a little bit of a debate about it, but sometimes I just find something I really like. This looks like probably a student piece, but I just loved the color. I loved all of the different textures in it. You know, they had played with all of these organic designs and I decided let's give this one a go. We'll put it in the booth and someone might appreciate it like I do. So we went ahead and snagged that one. Back into the aisle a nice wood little planter, but nothing to scream about. I'll always check out a wooden candlestick holder, but that one I think was like plastic looking like wood. And there's its match down there. Do I pick it up? Do I put them together? Oh, there it is. Oh, I put it on the top. Oh, there, okay. Good human test, passed. All right, so anyway, back into the candles and vases and candlestick holders. Here is a nice clear glass one. I am waiting to find one that I just think is super spectacular as my test to see if these sell. Other resellers do well with them, so I'm wondering if I'm holding myself back here, but I just want something real great. So I loved this little piece. I kind of had it in the holidays, I definitely would have picked it up right away. It is not vintage, but it is just a nice metal gold painted wreath of candles and very pretty in my price range. I set it down and then got distracted by this. What was I saying just two seconds before? I'm gonna slow my roll on Monkey Podwood. Well, I guess that was a lie because I found this and I thought, ooh, I could put chips and salsa in that, and it's really fun. So I went ahead and picked that one up, even though it was $8.50, I think, which is a little pricey. I just liked it that much. So here we are into the mugs. I picked that up because it had kind of a vintage vibe, but it had the roosters. Love this Mexican pottery design, but because these were specifically tourist pieces, I decided to leave them. This is a nice pretty piece made in China. So I think this was a contemporary piece. It had like the fake crazing on it or like the manufactured crazing. So we left that one. Scouring the mugs, you know, I should probably slow my roll on mugs too, but I, why am I saying that? I'm not gonna follow my own rules. So. <laughs> All right, and further into mugs. Again, there was, it was a really packed Goodwill. It was actually really busy with people too when I was there it made filming a little tough. And there was one person who uh, was a little rude and said, I don't wanna be on the video. And I said, well, I really don't put people in the video, <laughs> just focusing on the stuff. But here's a basket and how much, 450? Hmm. Looked a little home garden for me. And now we're into the glassware. There's that classic Ikea. Oh, I, I think I'll just pick those up. I appreciated the blue color, but again, that was <laughs> the glasses that my new boyfriend from 15 years ago, who's now my husband, he had those. So great affection for them. They're probably, they're almost vintage by now. That was a printed on um, color treatment for that. Some tawny glasses, they were cute but I have a few tawny glasses in my shop as it is that I think are a little higher quality, a little more exciting. 
so I left those behind. I just wanted to show off this head. I see these from time to time, and I spent time working in a salon, and those are what uh, people who are in beauty school use to practice haircuts on. So if it has a short haircut, that means they completed their, their training. And they're really expensive new, by the way, because that's real human hair. So you can color it, you can cut it, and it behaves and style it. You know, it behaves exactly like human hair would because it is human hair. Here we are in the bags. Let's get back to thrifting. Let's see. Did I find anything in these bags? I don't remember finding much, but I think there was something I wanted to look at, but someone had been standing there. So I'm moving pretty quick here. Oh, some wood. And it turned out these were kind of just basic salt and pepper shakers. So I went ahead and set those back, but clearly I zoomed across to investigate them into the little arts framed pieces. And I didn't see much there. Had a little trouble filming here, not catching people. And into the big arts, no big scores today in this section, which is fine because bringing home a big piece of art does have kind of, does require some extra effort. Here I am looking in the kind of wired pieces, another piece of pink glass, which one of my commenters last time said, oh, I should have picked up the pink glass. It's almost always vintage. So I think I'll give it a go the next time. This I just set aside. It had a higher price tag than I wanted to pay. So here was a really nice, wood bowl but for 850 a little banged up and i wasn't confident i could sell that so i went ahead and put that one back eventually but it had a really nice shape to it i don't need any additional wood bowls here's a nice hunk of wood i'll always check out a hunk of wood really pretty grain on it but I have some similar pieces at home. I don't know why I didn't pick that up actually, because that would have been a nice addition to my little collection. All right, and here we are, cart shot at the final haul. Purses, those kitty cats, a brass lamp. Not like an overflowing cart, but I think pretty successful. So I went ahead and checked out. Moving on to the second thrift of this video. This is a Goodwill that is centrally located in Phoenix and close to my house. It's a small Goodwill, but I am there often. So here we are in the furniture and what do I see? This big, funky, it's fake, but it's supposed to be an animal horn. I thought it was fantastic. I mean, this is the perfect kind of thing to go in the booth. I was, I successfully repaired that little curled up piece of metal just awesome i'm so excited to get that in the booth because we have customers at brass armadillo who just like to get weird stuff right so i think that's the perfect thing to sell at brass armadillo on the i-17 and cactus road in phoenix arizona okay looking into the bric-a-brac i think i may have grabbed some of these owls the last time i was here this time there's a penguin wearing like a sweetheart top apron planter thing funny but not worth picking up for me and a hallmark acorn trinket dish some birds and nothing on that shelf so let's take a look here and here's a nice little brass piece for a very small price tag i think a dollar fifty and I went ahead and picked that up, and that is booth bound. It's a perfect little item for the booth. And I loved these little ashtrays with the sombreros. However, they all were chipped, so I decided to leave them. But had they been in good condition, I think I would have got those. They could also act as salt holders for your margaritas to dip the, the lip of your, your glass in. This, I just really liked the colors and then I saw that it was signed Mexico and it has this very unique open mouth. It kind of reminds me of a toucan and I loved the colors. So I went ahead and picked that one up and that one is at the booth. And so I wanted to check this one out too because it looked similar, but then upon closer in inspection, it wasn't the same. So I went ahead and set that one back in. No signature and the colors were not 
quite what I would want. So we'll leave that. Double checking the shelf. Let's look up, nothing there. And we're moving on into the metal pieces, some goblets, a broken pineapple. And then I spy this very pretty. It's not brass, it's like a painted, maybe a tin, thin metal. But I loved the scalloped edges. It's like a seashell, very romantic. So that one also went in the booth. Here we are looking into the kitchen area with clear Pyrex and more cooking dishes. Not much to see here. I, I rarely do I find anything on these shelves, but I check them always, of course. So nothing today. Then into dishware. I was slightly intrigued by these with the yellow rim. I thought they looked kind of 60s, but I don't know that they are vintage in any way. And they were pretty damaged, like a lot of the yellow was scraped up, so nothing too spectacular there. This was a really pretty plate, a 250. Maybe I should have picked that up, but the booth, my booth partner is an expert at finding the best dishware and he really knows what he's doing. So I think I feel a little, <laughs> a little bit like A, we have t plenty of dishware in our booth and B, his stuff is so high quality that I don't know that I would necessarily pick anything that is too impressive. Here was a piece of studio pottery, pretty clumsy and heavy, so we left that behind. And then moving along into some odds and ends, the external piece of this kind of intrigued me. I thought it was like an interesting treatment. So I was just kind of looking at, looking at it out of curiosity, but did not have any interest in bringing that home. The shape on this attracted me, so again, just kind of touching everything. This obviously was like a Sirico or um, dart piece that was broken, but then this one was intact, and I love the green. So it obviously the plastic mold was like a green, and then they gave it sort of a copper gold brushing dusting over. So I went ahead and grabbed that one. I do have a place for that in my bathroom that would look really cool. So I'm debating whether or not to keep it. I feel like I'm keeping a lot of stuff lately, so I'm being kind of a bad reseller. This was a really nice, heavy piece of metal, either a letter holder or a napkin holder. Very pretty, $2.50. I think it was date stamped in like the 1990s, but I thought, you know, that's a nice piece. That'll go in the booth. I can make a couple dollars off of that. Not a ton, but you know, those little sales add up and that's how I pay my rent and a little bit of gas money every month. Okay, I loved the shape of this lamp. It's contemporary, but I just thought it was like a really cool undulating shape. So I'm just kind of looking at it and touching it because I love lamps, but I ultimately didn't pick it up. And looking very closely at some of these, if there's a matching pair, I usually like to take a look at it, at least just to see what it's all about. And then this one was a nice piece of wood. I'm actually on the hunt for, oh, and then this is just a shout out. Uh, I always get extension cords at the Goodwill because they're so cheap and handy to have. I loved this vintage desk lamp. It was so super cool, but it didn't have a bulb. And I don't even know, like, I feel like I would probably have to buy five bulbs before I got it right. Here we had a bunch of like, mid-century, possibly, um, cutlery and silverware that I thought was really great. So I'm always looking at those. And maybe I should have grabbed some of these as a mixed lot, but then I found these with the wood handles. And I felt like those were a definite slam dunk in terms of the mid-century modern aesthetic. So here's a bag that was full of them. So now you're gonna see me frantically search all through the bags for any other ones that match. And I, like, again, I kind of passed over the ones that just had the pressed metal designs, but I liked those flowers. And I think I probably could have made some sort of mismatched lot out of a lot of these. So I'm regretting I didn't pick up more, but I was really focused on getting these 
very distinct mid-century modern. Now this bag only had one inside of it and at $4.50 for the whole bag, I was kind of debating and then I found some more in some other bags. So uh, this is really wild camera work because I was close up on those bags. I ended up putting that other one that only had one in it back, um, which now I kind of wish I would have brought it home because I could have used the rest of them for a mismatched lot, but that's okay. So those pieces online go for anywhere from eight to $12 per piece. So I'm probably gonna do a big lot sale on my Etsy. Um, I'm thinking, and I, I just haven't counted how many I have. I think maybe I have like 25 pieces. So we'll see what I price those as. There's also a lot of listings for that cutlery. So in order to sell it, I'd have to be pretty competitive. There were a ton of shoe lasts, which are very handy items. These were made out of cedar. So I picked up four and I am an idiot. I didn't know that there was like a left and right with those things. So I picked up four left feet. So I still need to go back and see if there's any left, you know, hopefully there's four right feet left. I feel really silly, but I didn't put two and two together on that. But I also don't really wear dress shoes that often or have a need for shoe lasts. I bought those for my husband. Okay, uh, nice wood tray under there that I was investigating, but gave up on it. This was an interesting wood box. Looks like, I don't know what that little piece would be used for, but of course it's most likely jewelry. Or maybe it's like a shoe shine kit, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, I put it back. And I'm in the wood aisle, which of course I love. And back there, there was like a fake wood bowl, like a live edge. It was all plastic though, so I left that behind. Here, I am looking in these utensils because I was hoping to find maybe a big serving spoon or a larger piece. Um, to match those mid-century modern cutlery that I picked up in the bags, but didn't find them. Here I was just admiring these cute little hot pads. Um, they were pretty dusty dirty, but I liked their shape and design, and they were clearly vintage, but I left those behind. And then here is a, is it a Jim Beam bottle? I have tried selling these in the past and some the tiki ones sell really well and maybe the ones that are location specific, but that one I didn't feel like would sell. So here's the cart when all said and done, again, not, a, not overflowing or bursting. Then at the last minute I saw this really cool sparkly striped dress that I threw right in the cart. I'm gonna mess around with it and see if I can make a cool outfit out of this one. I might belt it, I don't know. So it was only $8, so I threw that one in the okay, cart. Okay, I thought I would do a little haul video because I went thrifting and I did not record, but I wanted to show you what I found. And also I kind of forgot what I picked up, so let's take a look. This, okay, so I got myself a project, which I usually try not to do, but this is a lamp without its guts, so I need to add some lamp guts to this, but look how beautiful that brass is. I think I might keep this one. I usually only do uh, projects for things that I plan to keep, and I just think this is gorgeous, so we'll see what happens there, and that was $4.50, so I thought that was a good one. Oh, but this, I'm so happy found this beautiful candlestick holder. Another brass piece, of course. Never leave brass behind. And then this snatched right up as soon as I saw it. Now it's poking through the bag. Very beautiful. I just sold one of these out of the booth. Super gorgeous wood hand-carved book holder. And that was only $4 and 50 cents. So I think that's pretty good. I think I can get like maybe $12 out of that in the booth. I don't know. I'll see what they go online for. Then here's just a metal, like a little apple cart trivet. I'm going to shine this one up cause it's, pr it's pretty grimy. So we'll get that one going. That was two fifty. So I'll probably sell that for like $7 in the booth. 
And then, oh, I thought this was a great baggie. It's $5.50. And it had some made in Japan ceramic salt and pepper shakers, these sort of, I guess, totem pole, tiki, maybe not tiki, I don't know, um, ones. And then these matching feet with these big toes, I thought those were really funny. And all of them still have their stoppers. So for $5.50, you know, I think I could probably get seven or eight dollars per pair. And then this was just a nice piece. I don't think it's vintage. But it's a beautiful stone carved, uh, it says, handcrafted in India, owl. Um, and I thought that was very pretty. Then I really like these. They're knife and fork napkin holders. Uh, a little pricey for the bag, but I just liked them so much. I thought they'd be cute in the booth. So I will go ahead and price those. I can probably only get like $10 max for those. Here's a nice made in Japan ceramic froggy napkin holder, letter holder. So cute, his little tongue is sticking out. I think that will sell really well. It's just a cute little frog. But then this was the big, oh, really big one. It's so heavy. It was $12.50. This pedestaled silver plated, I'm gonna guess, platter. So that one, I. Even though it's $12.50, I think I could probably get about 25 bucks for it, so not too bad. Okay, these are unwrapped. All right, old habits die hard or whatever, because I picked up a studio pottery, very nice little pot. I love the green color. It's so pretty. Um, I couldn't resist. It was only $2.50, so I went ahead and picked that one up. And then this one, I think it's so cool. I don't understand what it is but look at this shape it's so interesting and it has some holes on the bottom I don't see a signature but I'll have to really take a closer look all over maybe there's a stamp somewhere but I just think it's so super cool and unique I mean it would just look great among any kind of decor really nice neutrals love the stripes so yeah that is my haul Okay, so while we're in here, let's switch over to my inventory shelf because a couple things sold. First of all, these, this little pair of swans, brass swans sold. These are so cute. And I just listed them the other day and they sold really quick. So I'm happy about that. And then these sold. Now these are in a mid-century modern urchin candle holder. Uh, they're in a mid-century modern style. I think they're vintage. They could be contemporary. I could not find, well, I found one other online and they wanted like $250 for them. So of course I did not sell them for that much, <laughs> but those two also sold. And then one more thing sold, I'll pop a picture of it. So I wanted to show these swans all gussied up and staged. They turned out really beautiful. They made a wonderful listing. So I'm very happy for whoever it was who bought them. Then likewise, I wanted to show off the candlestick holders in their photograph, their photo shoot. And so like I said, the other listing that had these were 250. Obviously I did not charge that much. So I'm really happy for whoever got those and I hope they are enjoying them. And then finally, the other thing that sold was this Ikea designer bird. I can't remember the, up oh, Katarina Britidis, Britidis. So anyway, there were several of these online, but it's my first uh, discontinued or vintage Ikea piece that I've sold. So I'm kind of excited about that. And then also I'm super happy because a while ago I found this big batch of vintage wood carved colorful dominoes. They had all these really different designs on the backs. It looked so pretty and cool. And there were like 300 of 200 plus apparently. And the, those sold recently. So I'm super excited about that because I didn't know if they would. So it's always satisfying when that happens. 
So here are some new listings that I'd love to talk about. If you are following me on Instagram, you saw the journey of these pedestaled brass bowls. And actually these were in maybe my last video. I think they were, I got them in an estate sale. I went ahead and gave them a really nice polish, which was featured on my Instagram. So you can kind of see the before and after. And this one has a higher resale value. Similar pieces go for 40 or 50. I think it's because it has that uh, colorful filling and the cutouts. Then this one just has a really beautiful shape. I mean, like the pedestaled brass bowls, I think add some great dimension. This one had um, thinner brass and had some surface scratches. So obviously the price is a little bit lower on this particular piece. I recently listened to another reseller who said that these pieces always sell for her. So fingers crossed that that will go soon. Then still in brass, I mean, I'm just lousy with it, I guess. These are two gorgeous wall pockets in a art deco style. Very difficult to find. They usually go to for $30 to $40 each. So I am asking for a market price on them and we'll see if they can sell. If not, I'll be lowering the price, you know, in several weeks, which I just went through my Etsy shop and lowered a ton of prices on my items that have been sitting for a while. But these are new and I'm hoping I can get a market price for them. They are just so stunning and gorgeous. I had them for a while, I thought I would use them and I finally decided to sell. Similarly, these Nautilus brass bookends, I was keeping selfishly for a while, but I've decided to sell them, again, at a higher price because similar items are priced very high, the Nautilus being a really popular shape and animal, right? It is an animal. These are really spectacular and just have a nice detail to them. So and there's a close up of it. I, I just think they're super duper cool. So if I love a piece, I have a tendency to price it a little higher because it's got to be worth it to say goodbye. And we'll see if they sell fingers crossed, right? But again, if things have been sitting for a while, I have a tendency to lower their prices periodically. So something to keep in mind. Then here we are at our booth. I just wanted to show some footage, some recent footage of how things are going there. It's been a while since I've shown this on any of my YouTube videos. A commenter suggested I do a booth tour. So that is something that's on my to-do list. I just gotta get out there and spend the time to do it. We have so many items available. And again, I just wanna say thank you to all of you if you made it through the end of this video. Um, I really appreciate you like, just hanging out with me and getting into this vintage resale thing. This is my side hustle. I've been doing it for a little over a year. I really, really love it. And it's making it so much fun to get the feedback and the followers. So thank you all for that. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, see you later. Bye.